Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, today I have another On One Photo Raw tutorial, and I hope everybody's been enjoying this series on how to make any photo Instagram worthy as I take random average photos that I've taken and make them look, you know, worth posting online. So anyway, I hope this uh, series of uh, got going here has been helping everybody improve their uh, photos and stuff from their street photography, travel, vacation photos. You know, that might look pretty bland and you've been trying to improve them and you really do want to post them online, but you won't actually look better. So I hope this series has been helping you do just that. So anyway, before we get started with this uh, tutorial, do check out uh, this product from A Shampoo. A Shampoo Backup Pro 14 backs up your data and operating system automatically to all common storage types and cloud services. Always up to date backups take the fear out of hardware failure, OS issues, or malware infections. Don't miss my demo and review of Backup Pro 14. Plus learn more and download your free trial by clicking the links in the description below. Okay, everybody. Well, I have the photo that we're going to be editing today opened up inside on one photo raw. Now, this is a photo, a, a image I had taken up around Pebble Beach here in the Philippines, over here in the Mindanao Islands. It is a little hut floating out on the water just right off the shore here. The locals would actually go out to that and climb up on it and jump off of it into the water and stuff. It's not very big, just big enough like three or four people to lay on it pretty small but you know you can see the little rope here tie it up on it and it carries it and make sure it doesn't float away yeah i guess it's just something for the locals to lay up on and swim off of <laughs> so anyway uh let's go ahead and crop this to 16 by 9 which is what i want here and let me get the actual ratio here where is it free form there it is 16 by 9 there we go. Let's pull this up and right there. I want the one of the one third lines come through the very peak and that should work pretty decent right there. Go ahead and click apply. Wonderful. Now that's cropped in just right. You don't want it dead center because dead center looks dead. This gives the image a little more, you know, surreal ambient look to it. I guess if that's the proper word to say. Okay, once we got that done, let's go over here to uh, effects and add our effects. And the first thing we're going to do is drop in our curves. Okay, now we're going to be very simple on the curves today. What I want to do is pull the first one up here to somewhere about, you know, the, it says about 24 on the out. Essentially dead center of the uh, first square, one square up. Now next we're going to grab and pull to the well, three squares over three squares, squares up, which should be 77, 77. And that's it. Okay, that's all we're going to do on the curves. So let's go here and click add filter and add our next filter. Now the next filter we're going to add is a bleach bypass. So let me find that one. There it is, third from the top. And add that one. Now for this one, just click darker. And that's it. <laughs> that's how we're going to do to the bleach bypass. That pretty much takes care of everything. Okay. Let's add our next filter. And our next filter will be the glow filter. Everybody knows how much I like the glow. Now this is going to be pretty easy too. We're going to find charge more. Normal. Click it. Now it's going to be a little excessive. Don't worry. Go over here and click our little masking square. And click on luminous, uh, lumen. And our luminous masking. And that pretty much adds it dead on. That's all we need from that. Pretty simple so far. <laughs> okay, add our next filter. And our next filter will just be our vignette. And of course, just choose Big Softy. And that's it. And click on that. All right. So once we got that done, we've got all our effects going to be added to it. Now we need to do some local adjustments. All right. Two things we're going to notice here. Uh, the hut is a little too dark. I want to bring back a little more detail to that. And it looks a little bit too darker than what I really want. And also the skies in the background are... Well, it was took early, early morning. Probably around 6 a.m. 
and you can see the islands and stuff off the coast here all that looks a little faded too much too dark compared to the foreground up here in front we're gonna fix that okay so what we're gonna do now let's go over here and let's do our first one the first one we're actually gonna do is do the horizon here let's fix that one let's click over here pull it down and about right here but let's flip it over that way we're affecting the top that's pretty much just right all right now we are not going to be adjusting the exposure just double click exposure and get rid of that what i do want to do is i do want to pull up the contrast and i do want to pull up the highlights as you can see that fixed the background kept the details but got rid of that dark hazy look that was excessively hazy and we didn't want that okay let's click our next add adjustment at our second local adjustment here and let's click back over here on the brush okay now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lighten this uh hut up a little bit here so kind of brush this on by default it's on the <laughs> darkened one don't worry about that get rid of that one and we're just going to simply bring up the black, say about 50 here. And that's about right on that one. And the next one's actually want to drop the contrast on it as well. And that looks pretty decent right there. Might want to brush on just a little bit more in the darker areas. Just to kind of make sure everything's looking pretty decent. Since I have the feather at 50 and an opacity at 75. Brush that on in a little darker areas, a bit smaller brush. Can really help make sure we get all that detail out. There we go. That looks very natural. And that's what we want. It's always important to keep everything looking as natural as possible and not over processed. So once we got that done, we're almost done. So let's click back over here onto the develop and click on our details. And I want to go down here. I got one called uh, Daylight Sharpening. I mean, it's a preset of mine for like daylight photos that don't have any kind of luminous uh, noise in them. The amount of sharpening is 70. Threshold is 1. The noise reduction version will use 2020. However, the luminance will be set to 0. The detail at 40. The color will be at 5. And the detail will be at 40 on the uh, color noise. And once you get that done, click the uh, lens corrections and make sure your lens is chosen. I was using the Canon 85 millimeter F 1.8 lens, so that one is listed here. Okay, once you get that done, go back up to tone and color. And let's do our final adjustments here. Now our exposure, we are going to boost this up about one third of a stop here to 0.33. If you have trouble moving the slider, getting it about where you want. You can always dial it in manually, just like I did right there. And that brightened it up just perfect. Okay. Now the highlights here, I am going to drop down to like a negative 60. That's what I used before. And the mid-tones, I am going to drop down to negative 40. And that might seem like it's darkening in a little bit. However, our last filter that we're going to be adding here will be the blacks at a plus 60. And that will balance it back out. And uh, right there. That's close enough. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave the white balance as shot. Because that was the white balance I used that morning. And everything looks dead on. And that's pretty much it, folks. Really, really quick tutorial here. Just to kind of bring out a little bit of the detail and stuff. Make that image look very surreal. So let's kind of do a little, you know, before. As you can tell, uh, ain't a lot different going on here. But this image, you know, looks kind of boring. Even though nice subject matter and everything. So unless we click on do our final adjustments, really does bring out a lot of the detail and stuff in the image and make it look much, much better. Okay, everyone. So yeah, that's a pretty easy tutorial. Hope everybody uh, found it helpful and likes it. And if you do, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. 
Now, if you're interested in uh, purchasing On One uh, Photo Raw, do check down the links down in the description below. I am an affiliate of On One, so purchasing it does help support this channel. As well as check uh, out a shampoo backup Pro 14. At software that I use all the time to back up all my precious photos and stuff and because I don't want to lose them to ransomware or hardware failure so yeah if you uh, though your photos and stuff are important to you I would definitely check out a shampoo backup pro 14 it's really great program uh, I use it I'll use it every day multiple times a day to back up all my uh, programs and edits and stuff that I do so also check up in the cards for uh, the demo review of the Backup Pro 14 if you're interested. And as well, as I said and mentioned, if you uh, like this photo, uh, like this tutorial, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing is free. It's for you. and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone. Thank you for watching.